hey hi friends welcome to today's video today we are going to discuss about three thing the first thing is what is any view then what is view builder and then how we can create a reusable component in swift ui using view builder now to understand this any view and view builder let's see a common problem ui so let me write a few piece of code and then we'll talk about the problem Okay, so this is a very simple code that I have written. I have just taken two variable, state variable, one is is editable and one is the name. So what I am writing here that if my is editable is true, okay, I have to actually alter this if it is true. In that case, I have to return the text field so that the user can change the value. If it is not true, then I have to just show it as a label or it is a text. No, I also have defined one more function here. This is basically extension of view where I'm returning that what is the type of view that is getting formed here. Okay. Now let's run and see what actually it prints. So first thing, if you see that the type I'm printing it on this V stack level. So see if you see here, this is modified content V stack and then there is a conditional content as we are using conditional content that if the conditional content is true then in that case what it is showing it is showing some uh, uh, text field and if the conditional content is false in other case it is showing as text so what happens that when you write a code now behind the scene the swift ui creates a tuple view okay now if you read the definition of tuple view so I just go here. A view created from a swift tuple of view value. Try to understand that how it is getting formed. So for that, if you just go to the definition of this V stack, okay. So here, when we see the definition, we'll find one thing that is this part: at the rate view builder and then content. Okay. Now, if you further go deep inside this view builder, what is a view builder? So I'm just go to the definition. Then the view builder is basically it's a custom parameter attribute that construct views from the closer. Now, if I come down, you can see that there are total 10 build block that is defined. And if you see that each build block is actually same. the only thing that is changing is that the parameter that is taking starting from C0, C1, and then it's going till C9. And that's one of the reason that in Swift UI in anything like in, inside a V stack or H stack, the maximum number of element that we can place is 10 because this build block can have maximum 10 element. And this can be one of the questions that is generally asked uh, in the interview that why we have a maximum upper lim limit of 10. Now that's how the Apple has defined it. Okay. So this is one of the reason that why we have the 10 element and that's how this view builder actually works and then it forms your view okay so it knows like when you write this v stack now the swift ui knows that what is the content of this v stack okay like there's a there's a condition inside the condition you have text field and in, in the else condition you have a text and based on that it forms its tuple view okay and that's how the the, the swift ui manages all its hierarchy and based on what it has to rephrase what it, it has to update everything is managed through this Okay, now in this code, there is no issue. Everything works fine. Now, let's say that I have a lot of these type of conditions in my code, like I have multiple FLs and what is happening? My body is increasing in a lot of size. And that's the one of the bad practice that you know, initially we follow in the Swift UI. We just make our view too much bigger and it it looks like that we are again moving back to the the same problem of massive uh, view controllers so instead of view controller i can say the massive swift ui view now to solve this what i can do i can just create a variable let's say that i can create a variable called uh we are just returning i'll just call it as editable view let's say okay and uh, 
this will return again some view and what I will do I'll just copy and paste this code from here to here okay and I'll just return it here and return it there and here I'll just call this editable view oh sorry my bad so editable view okay now the moment you write it you get an error and what it tells you that function declares an opaque return type some view but the return statement in its body do not have matching underlying types now swift ui is smart there's no doubt in that but yeah it's not too super smart that it can know everything okay that we are telling that we are returning this view but we can no return a text field also we can return a text or we can return image so in this case when you're returning let's say that if I'm not returning different thing I'm just returning the same in this case it will not throw me any error because the return type is same so the Swift UI is very confident about what it has to draw but when you, you are changing the return type then in that case the Swift UI gets confused and it is not able to determine that how it has to draw the view now to solve this problem one of the approach is using the any view now what is basically any view so any view is if you see the definition it is a type erased view now, we'll discuss any view in more details in some uh, later video but in sorts we can say that this is a wrapper for the swift ui view and it will be like we can it will be able to return multiple views type from a function okay now as it is a type erase view so what it will do it will just think of uh, any variable in Swift. so what it does like when you define something as a any then you can put an integer also you can put a string also you can put anything because it contains it can contain any object so the similar behavior what we have in the Swift in the Swift UI I can say as a any view so what I will do I'll just wrap this thing inside a any view so I'll just write here any view and wrap it here so basically what I'm doing from two different return type I'm just changing it to one but let's see if I run this now what happens to this print statement that I was printing that what's my view hierarchy is getting formed when I'm using this okay so there's no difference in the screen it still sees my name but here if you see here it's now it's printing that it's a any view no can you determine what is this any view no until and unless I know what is the value of my is editable I cannot say that this any view is text fill or this any view is text so even it is less readable for me also if I ha have to debug something that which view is appearing which view is not appearing also if I talk in terms of performance then in this case the Swift UI is also not sure that what is my concrete type because now we are giving a, a type erased which is any view so it takes Swift UI more performance because in the runtime it has to do some operation to actually render the view as in the initial the Swift UI also not sure that what is the return type because now it's just that we are wrapping the text fill or text it can be any component can be list it can be v type you can wrap anything in the any view so this is one of the approach but this approach cost lot of performance issues and that's why this is not the recommended way now we have one better approach instead of using this any view and that approach is called view builder now we already have seen this view builder what is that a custom parameter attributes that constructs view from the closers now let's remove this any view so let me just undo this change okay and now the error will again come so now what I will do to solve this issue I'll just use a simple keyword that is view builder and also now we don't require this return statement so we can just delete this return statement also and this time again try to focus on the print statement now if you see it is printing the exact way it was printing when this whole thing was inside this v stack only directly because now the Swift UI compiler knows perfectly that okay 
I'm going to receive if the condition is true I'm going to receive a text field if the condition is false I'm going to receive a text one question can still come into your mind that that why we don't require a return statement in this case like when we were using uh, any view we put the return statement now the one reason it is that that we are not using uh, the return statement when we implement it through view builder that now each expressions will now be passed directly with the shift n because now if you see that the shift ui already has formed its tuple view so it already knows that what it has to redraw okay so in that case we don't need to explicitly tell the compiler that what should be returned now let's go to the last part of today's video that is that how we can create a reusable component using view builder let's take a simple example that i have a button which looks similar uh, uh, look and feel and that the the functionality of that button is to open some some screen okay now the only thing which can different is that the button color or button title anything can be different in in other screens but the functionality remains same so what will be one of the approach that you write that button component in every screen but that what it will do it will take a lot of you no know, like effort if let's let's say that tomorrow if you have to change it you have to change in all your view so let me just uh, create a generic button view okay so what i will do let me first write the code and then we'll we'll discuss it So now let's try to understand this code. So what I have done, I have created a button view, okay? Now which again is a type of view because in Swift UI everything is a view, and it has one show model property. Actually, I will be using this property to uh, show and hide or dismiss the my model. Then I, it has text, color, and the content. Content means what content we have to show once the button is pressed. Then the init method where I am passing the text, color. You can have depending on what you want, how much generic you want your button to be, and then the view builder. Now, if you see, this is like a closer, and that's what we read here. That a custom parameter that constructs view from closer. See something like this, and that's way how we have defined this view builder here. Okay. Now, in the body, it's the simple Swift UI code. So where I'm just confirming to this view protocol, taking a V stack inside that I have a button. Now once a user click on the button, I'm just making this model value as true, and then I have a seat which I'm binding with the show model property. So once this model property is so, it will show the content, and this content basically comes from this view builder. Now let's come back to our code here. Not let's say that I have to create multiple buttons. So button but not this button i have to take the button view that we are we have created okay now here what we have to pass we have to pass the text okay and this and the second thing what we have to pass we have to pass the color and then the content okay so let's say the text is uh, click me or I'll just call it as subscribe and color as color dot red and content builder now what you want it to be so I just want to open a new page with a text 
that will come to or let's say subscribe app develop okay let's say that I have to take another button just copy and paste this code I'll call it as like let make it as uh, what is the color yellow so I can give it something like black hope the combination looks good and here please like and comment okay as simple as it is now let's run this so now you can see that subscribe and like to button appears here forgot about uh, the position right now that we can manage but now if I click subscribe and see it opens a new page with subscribe because we are just giving a blank text you can have your own view on the click of this button okay and similarly when I click like opens a new uh, page with please like and comment so this way see my button code like I'm creating this button at just one place and then you can reuse it it across your application so don't worry about a, about the code I will be sending the link into the comment sections so that's all about today's video hope you like it and if you do like the video please don't forget to subscribe the channel and leave your feedback it will really motivate me to make more and more videos for you thank you